seines Vergessenheit. It was a nice little ceremony. Just me, her, the vicar, the ring, and her family. My family all refused to come. Three months later, our son was born. Then, two years later, a girl. Even then, I thought about running away. I was tempted, but I didn't have the nerve. It took me fifteen years to work up to it. Then, when it happened, I simply stepped out the front door and just kept going. I felt like a character in a bad spy novel, hat and dark glasses, clutching a document folder, sitting alone in a carriage, on a train chosen at random, going north. I was in a rock band when I was a teenager. That's probably quite common. We called ourselves Fatalistics. Our drummer wanted to name us after an old Beatles song. I can't remember which one. The guitarist left, and we changed our name to M for Murder. I met my first girlfriend at the second gig we played. It was in a small pub. She walked in with her sister and another female friend. The band split up soon after I started going out with her. Our first date was to see a horror film in some old run-down little cinema. I got off the train when it stopped in a town I'd never heard of, and I moved into a guest house. It was run by a horrible, cantankerous old landlady called Mrs. Goddard. I got a job in an office and settled down to my new life. I decided to buy a small bungalow with my savings. At first I considered taking in a lodger, but decided against it. The only trouble I ever had in that village was with my neighbor, a retired colonel named Plunkett. He never called himself Mr. He always insisted on Colonel Plunkett, retired with a slight punctuation between the second and third words. A handlebar mustache would have suited him. Our first child was a boy. We called him Thomas. She wanted to call him Nicholas. Our second child was a girl. We called her Sal. At age three, Sal caught influenza. She nearly died, but the doctors brought her through. I've always had a lot of respect for doctors and people like them. I don't think I could do what they do. We like to imagine that small towns are peaceful, with decent, friendly people. It's not true. The people just get worked up over different things. Retired Major Plunkett, my next-door neighbor, once lent me his lawnmower, but when I gave it back, he said I'd put a dent in it. I hadn't, of course. The dent had always been there. After that, he never spoke to me even once. Probably the first time I thought about leaving her was when our first son, his name was Nicholas, nearly died of influenza, and she blamed me. I'm not sure she ever really stopped blaming me. People used to tell me that women aren't rational, that men are the ones who need to make the decisions. But I think... Women are more practical than men. Sometimes, though, when it comes to children, especially their own children, they just can't let go. I remember my first girlfriend. Our first date was going to see a band called Dial M for Murder. They weren't very good. I met her again, quite by chance, about ten years later. It turned out I'd been to school with her sister. In fact, her sister was the girl whose pigtails I used to pull when she sat in front of me in Mrs. Caldicott's geography lessons. After we broke up, she married a bank clerk who ran off to Spain with a woman he met in a pub. I caught a train going north, not bothering to check its route, and just kept going. Before I left, 
My next-door neighbor but one, a retired colonel, tried to get me to pay for repairs to a lawnmower he'd lent me that he said I'd damaged. I don't know what he was talking about. He'd never lent me anything. It was the first night of our honeymoon, and we went to see some ridiculous horror film. It seemed like a good idea at the time, but maybe wasn't the most romantic of evenings together. I must have done something right, though. She got pregnant that night with our first child. She wanted to call him Thomas, and I wanted it to be Nicholas. In the event, it was a girl, slightly premature. The doctors did a good job with her. I've always had a lot of respect for doctors, and people like them. I don't think I could do what they do. I felt like a character in a bad spy novel, Hat. Dark glasses, document folder, sitting alone in a carriage, chosen at random, not knowing what I would find at the end of the line. I learned something important about train journeys that time. When listening to the syncopation of wheels on track, you should never, repeat never, try to fit words to the rhythm, because if you do, the wheels will be saying it for the entire journey. It's the same with a dripping tap. In fact, I think it's the same with people talking. They just can't let go. I got off the train at a station chosen at random. The town was small, with decent, friendly people. The next day I was a lodger, in one of those cheap and cheerful guest houses, catering to business travellers just passing through. It was run by a cantankerous old woman called Mrs. Goddard and her husband. He never spoke to me even once. When I was about ten years old, I wanted to be a fighter pilot, then a nuclear scientist, then an actor on the stage. The trouble was I had vertigo and didn't know anything about science and didn't understand Shakespeare. Someone once said, you always end up doing what you're second best at. But if I'm second best at walking out on my wife and kids, what am I best at? I found a job as a bank clerk and decided to buy a small apartment with my savings, then started going out with a nice young woman. She had been a guitarist, then a geography teacher. She had pigtails. It was an eighteen-month engagement, and we got married in a registry office. Just me and her. We had first met a little more than two years beforehand. It was in a pub with an over-loud band playing an old Beatles song at one end. Not the most romantic of evenings together. She was there alone. In fact, she was only there at all because her boyfriend at the time was the drummer in the band. Our first son was born twelve months after the marriage. Our second son twelve months after that. They both wanted to be fighter pilots when they were ten. Thomas, the second son, wanted to be a nuclear scientist when he was twelve, and an actor on the stage when he was fifteen. He joined a rock band called Fatal Statistics. I've always liked women with pigtails. That's probably quite common. At school, one girl kept on accusing me of pulling on them. I didn't, of course. Okay, I was tempted, but I didn't have the nerve. My girlfriend had been married once, but her husband had run off to Spain with a woman he'd met in a pub, and her child had died some years earlier at age four of influenza. I think she just needed someone to talk to. She told me about her husband. He had been in the army, but had to retire for health reasons. He was a major. I think the thing I most regret is never having settled down 
got married, had kids, I think I would have liked to be a family man. But no, I don't really regret anything. It's not been a bad life. I've got my wife, my kids, my medals from the army. I was a colonel. I was a major. I was never in the army. It's just a shame we never had kids. Our first child was born prematurely. I thought about running away, but never did. I haven't seen my family for years. It was a nice little ceremony. Just me, her, the vicar, the ring, and her family. Her family all refused to come. It is approaching midnight as I write these words, which shall probably be my last. And tonight the world is a silent place. It is long past midnight. There shall be many more words. The world is not silent. I have not yet started to write.